hey, Stephen Mirisu, Wine Saves Lives, or Cabernet Franc Saves Lives as it were tonight, coming to you from my kitchen. Sunday evening, beautiful. We've been going through a bit of a heat spell here in the Livermore Valley over the last week or so. Mod modulated a little bit tonight, a little bit more moderate. It's not uh, 90 plus degrees like it was a few days ago. And I'm, my mind is a whirl as it normally is with all things Cabernet Franc. We just released under the Stephen Kent winery label, a new single vineyard Cabernet Franc from the Gilmetti Vineyard. The Gilmetti Vineyard is the predominant and most beautiful and highest quality vineyard in the Livermore Valley. I think it's also produces some of the greatest Cab Franc in the state of California too. I, I have written a lot recently and will continue to write a lot about how wonderful the Livermore Valley is for Cabernet Franc and how I think that it really can be a central place in California, can be the hub of that Cab Franc wheel for a regional standpoint and how Cabernet Franc, I think, will end up being the emblem for our growing area. This vineyard is 64 acres and only has about 3.7, a little under four acres of Cab Franc. It's planted to a clone called California Clone 4. Clone 332, uh, Ontoff clone from Bordeaux that was planted back in 1999 in this vineyard. Gilmetti is a 100 acre piece of property with 64 acres planted, runs downhill from east to west. It's located in the eastern foothills of the Livermore Valley. So if you've ever been through or over the Altamont Pass as you're going to the Central Valley or you're coming back into Livermore, that is the barrier that kind of separates us, the easternmost city in the Bay Area from the Central Valley. The cold air that comes in from San Francisco Bay every evening, drawn in from those uh, increasingly warm temperatures on the other side of the pass, hit, hit the pass, pull on top of Gilmetti, causing it really to be the last vineyard that buds out in the springtime, the last major vineyard anyway, and the last vineyard that gets harvested in the fall. People have a misapprehension about how warm it is in Livermore. It's warm during the day sometimes, but it's no warmer than mid Napa Valley. And our diurnal temperature range here is significantly larger and greater than it is from St. Helena North to Calistoga in Napa. I always agog in the first week and second week of November when we're just about to harvest Cabernet Sauvignon for the first time that they're already done. They've been done for weeks in Napa Valley. Livermore is a perfect place to grow this variety. We'll talk about this in other videos as we explore Cabernet Franc and all of its nuances. But I just wanted to bring to your attention this particular site, this particular wine. We just released this wine a couple of days ago, in fact. We only made about 60 cases, 70 cases in this particular vintage, 2021. Short and fruit in the 21 vintage. It was the year after all the fires and smoke taint. Really, the fires surrounding Livermore, but all the smoke tends to get funneled through the Livermore Valley on its way into uh, Central Valley. We threw away 7,000 gallons worth of wine. All of our wine was thrown away in 2020. So 2021 was a, a godsend of a vintage. It was a vintage. It was something that we could actually wrap our arms around all the way through fermentation, extraction, aging, bottling to, to produce something that we think is really gorgeous. Gilmetti tends to be um, a little on the redder fruit side of Cabernet Franc, redder cherry, redder berry, redder floral notes. If we've made the right decision in the vineyard as far as picking goes, the wines tend to be um, smoked paprika rather than green pepper. They have a savory side to them that is just absolutely beguiling and so friendly for food. It's, it's a site that has really begun to come into its prime given that it's 20 plus years old now. And it's a site that, that of the 3.7 plus acres, there are nearly four acres, getting about three tons to the acre in terms of yields. A vineyard that's beginning to self-regulate that's certainly being pruned and grown for balance, not for extreme yields, extremely small yields, and certainly not for extremely large yields that you would get in a real commercial venture. 
we end up making roughly, oh, I don't know, out of the seven to 10 tons we might get from the vineyard every given year, this wine, this particular site goes into a bunch of different wines that we make. And so this single vineyard offering is the only, <coughs> excuse me, the only offering of its kind from Stephen Kent that is pure vintage and pure varietal and site in the given year. It's used in blends for lit, from lineage to Lotricote and various other things. But it's a, a real stunning place. It is um, a gorgeous place. I've written a lot about it in my first book and will write a lot about it in my Cabernet Franc book, which is in the offing, we hope. Uh, we hope you get a chance to try this at the winery. There's not much of it left. There will be more as we go along, to be certain. And you can find it in other blends that we're making. Gilmetti Vineyard, Cabernet Franc, Stephen Kent Winery. The home of Cabernet Franc in the Livermore Valley. And as far as I'm concerned, Livermore Valley is Cab Franc City for California. Cheers. Hope you enjoy.